In this video, I will be breaking down and explaining how I got the tone I used in my Come As You Are guitar cover video. Come As You Are is not only my favorite song on Nevermind, but it's my favorite song in general. I believe it is the hardest Nevermind tone to recreate, as it is by far the most produced Nirvana song. I don't mean that in a bad way. I realize that in the punk world, saying a song is produced has negative connotations. But I think the official mix is an absolute masterpiece of audio production. There is so much going on, so many lush guitar layers and textures. It takes multiple listens to catch everything that is going on, particularly after the distortion kicks in. Come As You Are and Lithium are the two Nevermind songs that isolated tracks are not available for. I don't know how true this is, but it's been said for years that the master tapes for those two songs were lost. That is why in the Guitar Hero and Rock Band games, they use the Ready 92 version of Lithium and the unplugged version of Come As You Are. What I wouldn't give to have just a glimpse of the isolated tracks for Come As You Are. I can't even guess how many guitar tracks there are in that song. All I had to rely on was the actual final track itself, so that was my only reference. I'll first go over what gear I used and my settings, and then I will go over what's happening in my audio software Pro Tools. The guitar I'm using is my Fender Kurt Cobain Signature Jaguar. This is a 2011 Road Worn Edition. It was my birthday present back in 2011, and I will never forget opening the case and seeing this guitar for the first time. I honestly stared at it more than I played it at first. All the scratches and dings made me think that I had a museum piece right in my house. I've recently been seeing people knock the Cobain Jaguars, and tone-wise, I don't understand why. It is no secret that this signature model is not 100% accurate aesthetically to Kurt's actual Jaguar. The body color is too dark. The pickup spacing is incorrect. The bridge model and color is incorrect. And the headstock size is wrong. The obsessive fan in me would normally want to somehow correct all of this. But I have left this guitar completely stock for all these years because I don't want to do anything that might potentially change the sound. While Skystang 1 is my favorite guitar that I own, objectively, the Cobain Jaguar is by far my best guitar. It is extremely versatile. The dual DiMarzio humbuckers can honestly do it all. The lead and rhythm switch and the thumb wheels give even more tonal possibilities, in addition to the three-way toggle switch. When people tell me they only want one Kurt guitar and ask me which one covers the most ground for Nirvana tones, I will always recommend the Cobain Jaguar first. This guitar, running through a DS2 and any clean amp that has the ability to have a touch of breakup, will easily and quickly get you Kurt's iconic live late 1991 tone. So while it is not a 100% accurate replica of Kurt's Jaguar, it does 100% recreate Kurt's Jaguar tones. For pedals, I'm using my Electro Harmonics Small Clone, Electro Harmonics Polychorus, and my 1992 Boss DS1. I want to make it very clear that Kurt Cobain did not use a polychorus on Nevermind. He did not start using a polychorus until two years after recording Nevermind, during the In Utero era. Here's why I'm using mine though. While mixing Nevermind, Andy Wallace used a Yamaha SPX90. This is a multi-effects processor that was released in 1985. Yamaha intended it to be an affordable piece of studio upward gear, but it went on to become a classic that is still sought after and held in high regard to this day. It has a wide array of effects, such as delay, echo, vibrato, flanging, chorus, phasing, and pitch change, among others. It's been said that Andy used this primarily on bass throughout the entire album to give it more movement within the mixes. But it's been long believed that he also used it on Kurt's guitars in Come As You Are, specifically on symphonic mode to add more chorus and depth on top of Kurt's small clone tone. I was close to buying an SPX90 for these tone videos, but I thought it would be cool to see if there was a way to recreate this tone with pedals instead of outboard gear, just in case anyone out there was trying to recreate this tone live. So I turned on both my small clone and polychorus, messed around with the settings, and honestly found a combination relatively quick that I thought got pretty close. I did go on to add a little more chorus in my audio software, but I'll go over that later when I walk you through the mix. Here's how my clean guitar sounds with no processing, just the two chorus pedals on these settings. I used my vintage Boss DS1 for distortion, but used different settings for the main distorted rhythm and for the solo. 
Here are the settings for each. The amp I used is my Fender Tone Master Twin Reverb. These are my amp settings. So that's the gear I used. But now here's what's going on in my audio software Pro Tools. I have three sets of guitar tracks. Clean guitar, distorted guitar, and solo. All three sets are double tracked. Let's start with the clean guitar. I have a channel strip EQ plugin that has some pretty big cuts and boosts. I have a frequency analyzer on the official track and try to copy where the boosts and cuts are happening in the intro when it's just the guitar, before the drums kick in. This is the closest thing that I have to an isolated track reference for this song. After that is the one knob fatter to add a thick layer of low end, the one knob brighter to add some sparkly highs, and the air chorus just to add a little more depth to my already very chorused guitar track. The main clean guitar track is being bussed to a reverb track. I'm using a guitar plate reverb. Here's how the clean guitars sound with and without the plugins. Next is the distorted guitars. Pretty simple stuff here. A channel strip EQ plugin adding some high end and cutting out offending frequencies. And then the one knob fatter again for that sweet low end. It's using the same guitar plate reverb as the clean guitars. The clean guitars are going throughout the entire song, even after the distorted guitar kicks in. This layering, in my opinion, is absolutely crucial to this studio tone. When doing research for this tone, I watched all the other Come As You Are tone videos that were out before mine to see how others had approached it. I was baffled to see no one had attempted this layering or even brought it up. If you listen closely to the official track, you'll hear that there's clean guitars going throughout the entire song and that their volume starts to vary after the distorted guitars come in. For example, during the solo, the clean main riff is much louder than the distorted riff, but during the outro, the clean riff is not as loud, and you can hear the distorted riffs a little more. So if you're trying to recreate the live come as you are sound, then yes, just have your one guitar track and hit the distortion during the first I don't have a gun part, and then keep the distortion on for the rest of the song. But if you want the studio tone, this layering is essential. Lastly is the solo, and there is not a lot happening here. Channel Strip EQ, cutting the mids by just a little bit and adding some twinkly high end. I also automated these tracks to move from left to right in the stereo field, just like it does in the official track. I do want to address something really quick. When I uploaded this cover, I was expecting the first thing that people would point out is that I was using the poly chorus on a song Kurt did not use his for. But to my surprise, the thing that people were quick to point out was that I played the solo a little too fast. And some of the comments were nicer than others. Listening back, these comments are right. I rushed the solo a little bit. I was half a beat too fast. This realization honestly really bummed me out. I tried my hardest to recreate Kurt's playing style and I'm mad at myself for not catching this while recording, mixing, or editing the video. That is how I've always played the solo. And at the end of the day, I'm happy my error was pointed out so I could learn from it. In an attempt to redeem myself, I have re-recorded the solo at the correct speed this time and will close this video with that. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Nirvana Guitars and to subscribe and check out my other Nirvana gear videos right here on YouTube.